Hi everyone, welcome back to our Tidbits session and this time I'll be showing you a simple frame definition. In this example, I've set up two columns and a beam which can be controlled using these two sliders, the height and the width. I'm bringing them into the line to beam component and identifying unique IDs for the three elements A, B and C. I've defined a cross-section of HEA 300 with a steel 235 grade material. And this has been defined for all of our three elements. For our supports, I've actually defined them with two separate components for our two column supports. And this is because I want to visualize the impact of when we change the support conditions later on in our analysis. At the moment, they've been fixed in the translation in all three axes and also fixed in Rx in one direction or one support. I've defined two load cases in this setup. The first one being a vertical load case where I've got a five kilonewton per meter uh, line load on the beam B. Secondly, in our uh, horizontal load case, I have defined a two kilonewton load, a two kilonewton per meter line load on our column C, and this has been oriented in our global direction as well. Lastly, here we are also able to define the connections or the joints between the two ele uh, our elements. So I have two components to control the connections between our individual columns and our beams. At the moment, we have not currently released any of our joints. So these are now assembled in the model, as you can see, and we are using the analyze component to get the initial results. We can see the two deformations of the separate load cases. In the model view, I've set the deformation on to 100, so we can uh, exaggerate the deformation slightly. and if we want to make our bending moments, which have activated in our beam view to be smoother, we can also decrease the length segment, as you can see in this component in the rendering set, render settings. I can visualize the different load cases by going to the result case and clicking on horizontal or vertical. So let's go and now change our support conditions and see what the uh, effects are. Let's now fix our Y in our first support. And we can also release TX. Now what we see is that on our uh, second uh, support, we've released TX there are no bending moments inside our right-hand column. If we now were to basically fix also TX and TY, we can see basically a symmetric system. We can preview the results of a horizontal load case as following, where you can see the bending moments as such. If we want to exaggerate the results, we can double click on the deformation button and set a higher value, for example, as well, to increase the factor there. If I now were to release TX, RY in both, you can see the subsequent change in our system. If we were to also release, for example, T or Z in one of our supports, we will notice that in our analyze component, it's now turned orange and it gives us this error message saying that there is one rigid body mode in the system, meaning that our structure is kinematic. I can use the eigen modes component to visualize where exactly our system is failing. So now I'm just going to disable the preview of these ones and look at our eigen modes component. The eigenvalues show a very, very small value, which means that this system is kinematic. 
by previewing the results and turning on the deformation, we can see exactly where this is happening. And you can see our support basically on the left column is moving in the Z axis. If we now set TX, oh, sorry, TZ back, we can see now we have a much larger value or some in our eigenvalues. And if we increase the deformation, you might not see anything in this front view, but in our perspective view, we can see the deformation shape there as follows. Let's go and now set our joints in the definition. So I'm going to activate once again our uh, model view and beam view. Let me set the TX of our support once again. And we can go to our defined joints components. So the first one is setting the joint condition at uh, the connection between beam B and column A. If I now click T, oh sorry, R, Y, you can see now we have a joint release at this connection. This column now is, is uh, not having any bending moments in this load case. We can see also the deformation shape changes. And we can also look at, for example, the preview of the vertical load case too. We can set our uh, support condition of our second support to be fixed in the RY as well to see the difference in our deformation shape. Let's see what happens if we also release RY in the, the second uh, joint. And now we can see that there are both of our columns are not having any bending moments in this load case. And we can see the deformation shape also is significantly different. We can also have a look once again in the horizontal load case. And there we can see basically bending moments in our column, which are not transferred to our beam as well as our other column subsequently because we've now released uh, RY, rotation in the y-axis of both beams. That's it <coughs> for today's uh, short session. Thank you once again for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.